CP. Are you serious? He's gone. Fanny, Fanny, Thomas all the way. Touchdown Redskins, 64 yards. 26 minutes. <laughs> he's pretty sharp, you know. He'll coach you up on the, the Miami guys and everything else. He's kind of he's kind of fun to be around. Got an opinion too. You know, I've been blessed to uh, have the opportunity to go out and be myself and say the things that I say. And you know, for the outside world, they can deal with it how they deal with it. 26 minutes with Clinton Portis, CP. Teach him something. Welcome to 26 minutes, episode 46. I'm in the house with Miss Monica McNutt, as <laughs> usual. Uh, we have a great show planned for you today, starting off with the topic of, you know what I was thinking about over the weekend, Monica, and this this would be a great topic, because the news came out about Dak declining $30 million, right? And I thought about Trent, and I thought about Zeke, and Melvin Gordon, and all the guys that's pretty much in contract dispute or has something going on. And the first thing I thought about was Trent in contract situation. Like, I think people have already lost the meaning or the understanding of Trent Williams and how much he means to this Washington Redskins organization. Really? And the reason I say that is because some people say it's medical. Some people say it's money. I think it's more medical than money because the realization of Trent Williams not reporting and getting fined eight hundred thousand per game, which adds up to fifteen million dollars a year or thirteen million dollars a year, compared to what you're asking for to be the highest paid tackle, which is another three million dollars. Like you're telling me you're gonna turn down thirteen million to gain three million? That math is definitely something to consider. How, but how do you feel like people have lost what he means to this well, organization no no i lost the meaning of his issue with the Got organization okay. people Got are it. assuming it's about money when i i think it's about medical what would you do though cp like you've lived this life and one thing i will say that's probably different from when you were at your prime is we are now in a space where athletes get to control their narrative they get to stand up for what they believe is an injustice even if it's at the hands of an organization like what is he what do you expect to happen here well, I just think it's going to get ugly. Like, the standoff is something I hate for both, for Trent and for the organization, because Trent has done so much for this organization. But alongside that, the organization has given Trent every opportunity, you know, and stood by his side the entire time. So I just think it's one of those situations, like, you hate to see this because of knowing how valuable he is, knowing what he's uh, brought to the table, but at the same time, when he's had to deal with off-the-field issues, the organization stood by him. Never once did they turn their back. So that's what makes it tough, because both sides have been needing a, a, of each other. So now you get in this situation... And Sewell Craven's article came out where that. Sewell was taking a shot at the organization as well. So everyone, in my assumption of Sewell, when his situation came out, was one of those assumptions like, oh, you know, like this is a different cat. He's from Cali. Never knowing any inside details, never t discussing this topic with anyone. It was just outside looking in. But once I read Sewell's article, it was like, Wow, like I never could have imagined that or never thought of that. Like we didn't know they were going through a lawsuit. We didn't know they took the money away. Like you're looking at Sewell like, man, this this cat got a golden opportunity and it's not capitalizing. Yeah. And then he gets traded to the Broncos and he's getting on the field or he's more, you know, assertive. It's like, well, I have new life. You go from D.C. to Denver and you get life not knowing what the issue was the entire time. What? Is like is the only way the Trent Williams thing ends amicably a trade? I think so, but you're. I think this organization can get stubborn in this fact because you probably could have handled this and done this behind closed doors. But now that I see it in the media, and this is the information that I get, is media, is reading J.P. Finley's report, is reading what's going on, is listening to ESPN. So that's the insight that I get. So I already see, and the reason I keep saying I think it's bad is because it's like the communication is in the media yeah. instead of both sides picking up, picking up the phone and saying, you know what, this is like – this is how we can resolve this. You see what I'm saying? I, I got you, 100%. And I, but I also think that we're hearing more and more 
coaches at least come out and say, you know, the media doesn't quite have it right. And there's so much missing in this particular situation. I mean, even Adrian Peterson was talking the other day to media and that's his boy and he doesn't know. So everything has been kept very close to the vest and fix your chain. Cause I'm gonna make sure you look good. Just in or out. There you go. I was just, you know, I was feeling some kind of way. I came in. I was about to rip my chain off. I like the shirt. The shirt is clean. All right, so. This is my man. This is my man line. He sent this to me, so make sure we get get good play. Oh, wait. Oh, since so we're doing man. that, look at our producer, Steve. He got us oh, new yeah. cups. Look, we get gifts. We got sipping the tea. I think 26 minutes moving up. Monica, you're doing something right. We getting, we getting tea cups. Shout Whatever. out to Stevie for holding That's this That's all out. you. All right, speaking about players holding out and such, in our conference, our division, we still got shenanigans happening in Dallas. It's big shenanigans. And I just had this discussion, right? I did Undefeated um, with ESPN. And the topic was Dak turning down $30 million. And to me, I'm never a hater of a man getting his money, right? I think Dak deserves to get paid. And $30 million, I, I really feel like is great for Dak. If he's actually turned down $30 million, for in asking for forty million when Russell Wilson is getting like thirty one to thirty two, I don't think he's in the ballpark at this stage. Now he could grow and develop and become something that I don't see. I just don't see his upside where he's going to surpass Aaron Rodgers or um, Russell Wilson as as playmakers. Patrick Mahomes, like I could see Patrick Mahomes asking for forty million because he's in year two. He has a outstanding upside. But when Dak goes out and you're asking for more than $30 million, I think $30 million is a lot for him. So, but how much more do you think is the holdout, right? Because to me, and I think Russell's numbers are, are a little bit higher than that, but to me, the conversation between Dak and Carson Wentz, who was injured, and Carson has been paid pretty well by the Eagles as well, was more of a, Super Bowl. okay, something to, but he didn't, pull, yeah, uh, he did, it, he did, yeah, he took the team yeah, he got to him the there. Super Bowl. And when you look at it, Wentz and Foles got paid from that Super Bowl. Super Bowl. They both contributed and they both got paid from it. When you look at Dak, what this is how I feel about the situation, right? And Dak, Zeke, and um, what's the wide receiver name? Amari, Amari Cooper, right? They have an opportunity for at least the next five years to become the Big Ben, AB, Le'Veon Bell. Right, that's a trio that Pittsburgh shouldn't have broken up, but it it broke up out of greed. Roethlisberger was getting his money, uh, Levy Young wanted his money, and AB was getting paid. But all of a sudden, you lose that combo, and that's what I think is about to happen in Dallas because if you know they're trying to pay three stars and you need all three of them, Amari Cooper was the best upgrade that anyone got last year uh, via trade, right? Even I think he was better for Dallas than Khalil Mack was for Chicago. Mm, okay. And that's saying a lot. Yeah. So when you look at this, Amari Cooper has been quiet, first-round pick. He already got paid. He hasn't come out and said anything. Going about his business the right way, he's going to get paid. If you got to pay two of the three because you can't pay all three, which you probably can, but if – the way things are looking, Zeke or Dak wants to be greedy. So it's not worried about, I don't care what you do Is with that him. a conversation that Zeke and Dak have, though? Oh, like, I think all three of them should have the, the conversation to say, look, we're trying to keep us together. Like, we're trying to keep this trio together. So how can we do that? And still put a winning formula because Dallas have a lot of money invested in their D-line and O-line. Bro, these are numbers that I are astronomical to me. But honestly, a $3 million difference from $30 million to $33, like, is, are we talking big time worth dying on this hill differences? Yeah. Like, if, 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 if Dak decides to take the 30 so that they can stay together as a trio, like, what, how much money makes a difference on whether you would take a contract but or not? But if you keep them together as a trio, there's a lot more money to be made down the road exactly. compared to... If you decide to get selfish in this contract and now you're going to lose one of your star players and now two of you all got to carry this team, because if, if two had to carry the team, I'm thinking Amari Cooper is a definitely lock for me just due to this being a pass happy league, his playmaking ability, a guy who can turn a five yard slant into a 70 yard touchdown, which we've seen. Um, Zeke, because people feel like you could just plug a running back in and the running game is not 
a, a, a dire need and you could go running back by committee would probably be the odd man out really? because this is a pass happy league. Okay. So no one is running the ball 30 times a game, which Zeke would be great for. I think teams will substitute and say, hey, you know what? I can let him pass for 40 or 50 times a game and we'll make those yards up. So that's where the dilemma comes in between Dak and Amari or Dak and Zeke or Amari and Zeke. Somebody's going to be the odd person out, and I don't know who it's going to be. But if it's Amari Cooper, definitely we need you in D.C. Hello. Uh, we'll just take if it. you're listening. And when we come back on 26 Minutes, Monica is going to take the show away. Sun, fun, a private yacht. Man, three things that could be yours with the luxury cruising scratcher from the Virginia Lottery. If you win one of the four private yacht experiences, you and up to seven friends will sail out of Florida on a yacht featuring a 24-hour captain, crew, and a personal chef. You'll have flexible port options and access to a motorized watercraft. The $5 luxury cruising ticket features three instant win private yacht experiences and a fourth one available in a second chance drawing. There's also $12 million in cash prizes in the entire game. Take your summer from boring to luxurious with the luxury cruising scratcher from the Virginia Lottery. 26 minutes, episode 46 segment, uh, Monica segment. This is where she's about to take it away. Uh, we got preseason coming up. Preseason game one, we didn't discuss. We didn't. Right? We, we, we haven't chopped up preseason game one in where we need to go in this week from game one to game two. So. Okay, so first let me tell you a funny story. I was in Miami for the National Association of Black Journalists Conference. Which you didn't tell me about. Left me behind. I'm a, na- I'm, I'm a black I, journalist. I'm trying. You are, I'm trying and you to know get what? with the right people. It's crazy because I really, me behind. I was walking around and I was like, Dag, CP should be here. Like NFL Network's there, ESPN. Like Anyway, next year. It's in D.C. You'll be there next year. But I went to the gym at the Aventura, the JW Marriott, which was lit. It had like racks and everything. And this guy happened to be in there watching the game on his computer. And I was like, oh, bet. He was like, do you mind if I leave that on? I was like, absolutely. No problem. Please leave it on. I was like, which team are you rooting for? He said the Browns. I was like, oh, well, we can't talk. But anyway, so I got to watch the game a little bit in the gym. Okay, continue. So in that Browns game, which we ended up losing, you had some bright spots. You had you had some bright spots. Um, a lot of people, you know, the national media, when it get to the person that everyone here cares about, um, in Haskins, everyone – trying to figure out how is Haskins going to be. He had two two interceptions, right? And, you know, it was poorly thrown balls. Uh, one of the – what both passes, one was underthrown, the other one overthrown. Um, some mistakes by Haskins. But with the pressure that Haskins was getting, uh, I can kind of understand that. The jitters, first game, if you're going to make a mistake, the best place to do it is preseason. preseason. That's for what sure. preseason is for. Now you look at the other weapons. A lot of guys didn't play, right? A lot of guys, McLaurin, like a lot of these guys didn't get the opportunity to step on the field for game one. But they will be on the field for game two. So what I'm expecting is the growth between one and two. Because the offensive line, with no Trent Williams, with no starters out, um, it it got kind of worrisome. And instantly – brought up the conversation of Trent. Game two, you're going to get to see your starters play. You have to establish a running game because AP, Geis, CT are the people that has to carry you. You got three weeks, right? Probably two. You got two opportunities in the preseason to get some momentum to go into opening week. Do I want to see Geis on the field? No. Do I want to see AP on the field? No. Do I want to see CT on the field? No. This is game two against the Bengals. You don't want to see them? I don't want to okay. see them because I know what they're capable of. Guys, I don't know what he's capable of, but I know the upside that comes with guys. I'm not going to lose him in the preseason because I need a look. But at the same time, he needs to be in live action. I need to see that guys is confident. I need to see that he's comfortable with his leg. I don't want to go into week one where this is his first time someone attempted to tackle him and it goes bad. So, they have to figure out a way to put Geis in the game and keep him safe. All right. <laughs> when do we see that, though? That's what the discussion is about, Monica. Well, this, but where, you, okay, where you've played you this position. Well, for no me, way. Don't ask me. I don't know. I'm ready to see him now. He seems like he's ready to go. 
Yeah. Not for an extended amount of time, but you're right, just to kind of shake the dust off. Well, I think you give him safe runs, right? And safe runs are runs where he's not going to have to make a lot of moves. He's going to be able to square up, get downhill, square up his shoulders, get some contact, fall in a pile, and come out of the game. I, my, my words to him, don't break a big run. Even if you break a big run, you don't break a big run. Okay, I don't need to see that. What I need to see is you adjust to getting tackled. Right. I had this conversation with guys about learning how to fall because he's such a bulldozer. He when it comes to contact, you got to learn how to fall. You got as you fall, you have to get so small. You have to become a baby like rolled up in, in the fetal position as you're falling, because when you leave that leg out, you can't control everybody else. Some guys are not hustling. Some guys are hustling. Like, you're going to have people falling over the piles. You have some guys that's doing too much, but they're trying to make the team. So he has to understand all these dynamics and play safe. Give him downhill runs. Run a little power. Run a little gut. ISO. Give him an opportunity to scrap his shoulders, run into somebody. Hey, fall down. Come back to the huddle. So you waiting till game three to give him that? Like I when? I so, mean, so how I, and then how much of game three do you want to see him? I'll probably let him play a quarter in game three, okay. just so I can see the confidence. But they'll all be straight ahead runs. I want to see a little jump cut, like running into the back of people where you're in a pile and cover up. I don't want to see a lot from him because you have the season, because you have AP, because you have CT. You have the season to bring him along slowly. So that brings me to my next question, because we've had endless conversations, and it is still largely a conversation. In fact, you were quoted in the Washington Post for talking to Grant and Danny about wanting Haskins to chill out. There's no rush. Should that mindset at all apply to Darius as well? Well, Darius has put, put a year in the hole. I think Darius is ready to step on the field. I think he's capable. The insurance you have for Darius in, in the in – be able to spare him is AP. Right. All right. So if you even go out and burn AP up in the first seven or eight games because you gave him 30 carries, which will never happen, if insurance policy is in seven games, guys will be ready. Right. Okay. All right. So whereas with Haskins, my issue is if Haskins loses confidence early due to scheduling, these, these first five games are really tough. Right. If this city begins to bash Haskins within the first five games that were going to be tough, no matter who is that starting quarterback and he loses his confidence, he loses his edge. The recovery is so uphill. Yeah. Compared Straight to up. if you let someone else play in these first five games and whatever happens, happens. And then you you either let Haskins sit to bye week or you bring him in and he brings life to this franchise, now you're looking forward to Haskins. Gotcha. Whereas if he comes out and he bombs in the first five games, you're looking forward to drafting another quarterback next year. So I will say that in just talking with friends, family, folks in the area at different events, the overwhelming majority of folks that I have talked with are down to wait. They're like, we've messed up bef before by rushing. Like, they're down to wait. And so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Everyone who has come here has gotten the keys. They stick their hand out, and you drop the keys in their hand, right? No competition. No, Don't prove nothing. Don't build up. It's when you come, here's the keys to the Porsche. Here's the keys to the Ferrari, right? Haskins is the one person that you got under contract. He's not going anywhere. You can allow him to wait. You can allow him to grow. You can develop this quarterback. So why not develop him? You don't have to rush him out. You don't have to put him on the field and save the team right now because you have a good young nucleus. With these, with these young receivers, Sims Jr., Sims, uh, McLaurin, you know, you look at uh, uh, these receivers and – Think about the upside that comes with them once they gel and grow together. You could have something special because you still got guys. You still got Bryce Love. Like, you got security deposits that's waiting to, to mature. Patience is a funny game, though, in sports and life. Like, it, that's not easy. Like, I hear you. Got to have patience because what we've been attempting, that just rush and get it and instant get on the field and do it, Hasn't worked for us. So right now, I'm going to have enough patience for you <laughs> to pay the bills.
Helping people improve their lives is what should drive business. That's the belief at Coke Industries, which employs more than 65,000 people across America. The team at Coke works together to meet the world's changing needs in transportation, medical care, water filtration, household goods, energy efficient building products, and everyday technologies, all while consuming fewer resources. See the innovations firsthand at kochindustries.com. I'm trying to meet that boy Clinton Porter's though. They say that boy that they say he smooth on his feet. I'm trying to teach him something. Teach him something. Teach him something. Yo, it's such a great job. I'll be trying. Okay, wait. Segment three, I'm jumping the gun. I, I need to get your opinion on this. Last year, was it last year? Beyonce and Jay-Z collaborate, fantastic album. You know what I'm saying? Killing it with, I forgot the name of the song now, but that we all love. Oh, going ape, whatever. The lyric. I don't need the NFL, whatever. Tell them that we doing stadiums too. A la one Sean Carter, Jay-Z. <clears throat> Recently, Jay-Z's company, Jay-Z's company to co-produce Super Bowl halftime show and oversee NFL's social justice endeavors. What? Huge. Huge step for the NFL, right? Wait a minute. Legit? Huge step for the NFL. And this is why it's a huge step for the NFL. Because the NBA already adapted this, right? The NBA has already started this four or five years ago where the players had input. And the NBA understood who their audience was. That's why people go to All-Star Game. You get more people going to NBA All-Star to hang out, to be around, than you have You have corporations come to NFL events. NBA get fans involved, right? When you look at this for the, the um, halftime show, when was the last time you watched a halftime show? You ain't cared about a Beyonce halftime show. and Bruno. So, and you haven't cared about a halftime show since. Facts. Now... Jay-Z is doing the halftime show. Okay. Here's my qualm, so to speak, though, CP. One, I don't know how sincere this is. I think I applaud Jay-Z as a businessman, title, Rock Nation, you name it, he's crushed it. But to your point about the audience of the NBA, I don't know, and I would honestly, I have not done any research, I don't believe that the NFL audience is ready for Jay-Z and whatever this initiative is, is to really actually have legs that will grow. You know, you know what? That's a great topic for the simple fact that the NFL has not been ready for so long to understand and embrace is people of color that you're coming to see, right? And all these, the players, who do they listen to? They listen to Jay-Z. Who do they admire? Jay-Z is an outstanding mogul. It's easy for players to look at Jay-Z as a mogul than it is for them to understand Dan Snyder as a mogul, Right. Players sure. are looking at Jay-Z. Oh, he's self-made. He was a rapper. He came from my neighborhood. Dan Snyder is from, he didn't come from money. But CP, that's the point, though. Like, so, it, we still have not gotten to a point in the league, and maybe this is the first step, I hope you're right, where the players' voices are, one, loud enough and respected enough to actually make impacts. Because Dan Snyder, he can pick a new commissioner, him and his boys, honestly. But it's coming in due time. You're, you're starting to see, obviously, the Kaepernick, right? Yeah. Who who was who was supporting Cap? Jay Z and Beyonce, they supported Cap the whole time, all the way through. Beyonce had on Cap jersey for sure, right? So now you're bringing them to the forefront, to the mega Super Bowl, right? They're gonna have some input. They're going to help you with social justice. You have somebody not with their type of money. He's eventually going to have their type of money. But he's a billionaire. So he could talk with billionaires. He can get billionaires to understand, to see things that most people can't get them to understand. Do you honestly believe that? You, I do. You really believe that? I do. I honestly believe they're going to open up to this idea. Here's the first step, right? NBA... NBA been open they, to it. You got the owners. Far you got Kraft. Look at Kraft. But this, but exactly. You in the NBA, you had an owner lose his whole franchise for marveling at his team's physique in a way that was reminiscent of ancient history, right? Like the whole thing with the Clippers. I don't know that even if we suspect it. You mentioned some of the hot water that some NFL owners have gotten into. 
They no, still good. I'm, this this is not hot water. I'm saying, look at Kraft partying with Meek Mill. Look at the owner from the Sixers partying with Meek Mill. Like they're on stage, they're hanging out, they're buddies, they're but homies. But this is just scratching the surface. I feel you, and I I know that Robert Kraft has worked with Meek Mill in terms of his justice reform initiative. I've read about that, and I think it's great. But that's one. That's one, and we still but got you, other owners who are blatantly supporting. But you, it they're supporting money. Okay, and that's saying? they're so supporting this is, business. So this is why I yeah. feel like this is in a way a facade, and we I'm I'm definitely wait and see camp because at the end of the day, it is all about business. So if embracing black culture, I just culture, think it's hard to facade when it comes to Jay Z because Jay Z pick and choose where he wants to have his input or lay his fingerprints, right? Because two years ago, when they needed Jay-Z the most, he made the Pass song out, saying, yeah. no, nah, yeah. like, you're not going to use me as a puppet to calm down this, this crap you've started. But two years later, here it is, they're on the same page. So obviously, he has some kind of input. He has some kind of word. He has something that's brewing that's more powerful than this performance would have been two years ago when you really need it. I hope you're right. And I hope the Super Bowl halftime show is lit this year. We going? Are we going? Can we plan to go? Hey, 26 <laughs> minutes from Super Bowl. We will be there. And thank you all for listening to episode 46. We had so much more to give you that we didn't get to. But hey, guess what? Episode 47 coming up soon. So thank you for listening in. Peace out. If you have atrial fibrillation, you know it can be difficult to treat successfully. And Nova Heart and Vascular Institute in Fairfax is a leader in AFib treatment using specialized technology and expertise. This helps to more precisely target and treat rhythm irregularities that others could miss, helping to restore your heartbeat to normal. Give your heart the benefit of care. Visit anovaheart.org slash AFib to learn more and to find an Innova physician. Innova, join the future of health.